Hey Pete, uh, just uh, I was just over listening to, to Sean Payton's uh, uh, press conference briefly, and he was talking about installs. Uh, I'm just curious what, what that process has been like uh, this year, uh, getting the the offense installed while dealing with all this uh, kind of craziness that that y'all have had to deal with. Yeah, so every year, if, there, if it was a regular off season, we try to, um, as we get through training camp, what these guys here each install, you know, two or three times. And so during the, um, you know, the uh, quarantine, we were all staying at home. We had an, uh, a chance, you know, obviously when we were uh, virtually meeting with our players to go through all the installs one time. And, uh, you know, there may have been a few days where we were able to get back through, uh, you know, some of the earlier ones as well for a second time. And then as we came here, you know, we had kind of that, that ramp up period. We were able to start at the beginning. And then uh, as we broke into uh, full speed practices and now with the pads on, we're able to go back and start over. So, um, you know, when you take the, maybe the first couple installs, they're now hearing that for the, um, you know, they heard that a couple of days ago for the third time. And then you talk about the, uh, you know, today was a third down day and, and um, they're hearing that for the third time as it comes through. But the first time now that things are um, with the full pads on. Next question's from Larry Holder. Larry? Hey, Pete. Uh, just having to get your eyes on uh, Cesar Ruiz, uh, what do you think of him in person, on the field? And, of course, the, uh, the hot question, uh, center or guard, uh, wh where do you envision him uh, going forward? Well, obviously, about the person, we love the person. We love the makeup. That was, you know, a, a big part of – you know, when we, when we bring somebody in, we, you know, we vet those things first. And so we love the person. And then as far as, um, you know, the position, I, I know Sean Payton has said it is, is that we're just going to continue, you know, it's early really with the pads on in the process. And so continue to rotate those guys around and get them as much work as we can. And then just keep evaluating from there. Well, as far as having pads on, you're having to see him in practice. Cause I mean, it, you know, you normally you've seen him plenty enough, just, uh, is what you're seeing on the practice field kind of what you were able to see college tape and, and the expectations? Yeah, I, I think, I think absolutely. And I think that, uh, again, you know, with the pads on, it's still early, but um, yeah, we've been pleased. Next questions from Amos morale, Amos. Yeah. When you, I know you guys often talk about when you bring a guy in a free agent or a rookie, uh, the vision for him, uh, about how long do you think, it takes for you to kind of see if that vision is actually, you know, going to work out for him when you're in the training camp uh, for particularly a, a guy like Ty Montgomery. Well, I, I think this, I think that, uh, you know, Terry Fontenot and his group do such a great job of, of bringing us guys to look at and, and maybe giving us an early idea of, you know, how they, they picture them. And then as coaches have an opportunity to look at them and then, you know, based on what the film that or the film that you've seen from him coming from somewhere else, at least developing those um, those characteristics or those those values, those roles that you see him being able to fit in, and uh, you know, so far he's done a nice job for us. Next questions from Luke Johnson. Luke, hey Pete, this is a uh, 15 years together now for for Drew and Sean. Um, I'm just curious as to to what your your kind of take is on on their relationship, how it's evolved over the years. Um, and if you could, uh, yeah, I was talking to a couple guys about it, and, and they said, like, one of their favorite things about watching those two work together is those Saturday night meetings before games, and just seeing how they kind of bounce ideas off each other. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, their personalities have never changed. They've always been too competitive, uh, love the game, great people. Um, so that's never changed. But, you know, as and they know each other better than anybody at this point 15 years later. And so being a, being a part of that is special to see how – their minds think alike and, and that the discussion that you're talking about that happens on Saturday nights is just amazing to see how, how much they are on the same page and to share ideas and, and just really to be a part of it and to listen. Next one's from Amos Morale. Amos. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe we've gotten to talk to you since you've now had a chance to, you know, get some hands on work with Jameis Winston. Uh, just what have your impressions been of him and, uh, you know, what have you thought of the way he's performed uh, through these first few training camp practices? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, he came in, he's in great physical conditioning. Um, he's, you know, going back to the uh, off season where we were, we were doing some things virtually, you could tell that he's a quick study. He's uh, and that, and that's carried through. You can see him get in and out of the huddle. 
um, for not having much um, um, experience with maybe this, this terminology that we're using, maybe some of the plays, but um, he's done a great job, you know, getting the information, relaying in the huddle, and then, uh, you know, you see the live arm. Um, and so, so we're real excited, you know, with our ability to work with them. And uh, uh, obviously still early with maybe with the, you know, with the pads on and, and, and the practice really going. But so far we've been pleased with him. And you mentioned uh, getting in and out of the huddle. I believe that was something Jared Cook might have said last week that, you know, he's very intense about that. Is, is that something you've noticed? Yeah, I think that uh, he, you can tell when he's in the huddle, he's, his eyes are on the players. He clearly communicates. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been nice how he's, he's, he's grasped that knowledge and able to uh, reiterate it to the players and, and get everybody on the same page. Next question is from Larry Holder. Larry, go ahead. Pete, as far as having someone with so much starting experience like Jameis back there, does it make your job as far as preparing him a little easier or is it kind of difficult because he's so used to running a certain offense and now he's coming in and it's, it's a little different for him? Well, I think this, I think experience obviously goes a long way. Um, but he's been quick, to, like I said, he's been quick to speed to catch up to our terminology and, uh, you know, there's obviously things that are different about our offense. And so, you know, he's, he's really focused in the classroom. And, uh, you know, he hangs on every word that Sean Payton or Joe Lombardi's telling him. And, uh, you know, the one thing that we talk about is, is you know, it's coached to him. And, and he goes out in the field and um, his ability to try to do it the way that it's being coached. And, and that's been uh, 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 pleasant so far. Let me sneak one more in here, uh, and then you'll be done with me, Pete. You can uh, okay. you can yell yell about me, no problem. Um, <laughs> uh, Kamara, uh, you know, obviously we know health wise. Last year he uh, he's wasn't t totally himself. I mean, do you go into this season uh, almost with a with a game plan to kind of I don't want to say limit him, but uh, you know, you know overuse him, or, or do you feel like he's kind of prepared himself to? carry, uh, you know, a typical Camara type load and be kind of the same guy, kind of guy we saw the first two years? Well, I, th I think that, uh, you know, obviously it's still early. And uh, as we progress along here through the training camp, you know, as we get closer, we'll start putting together some game plans. But obviously, uh, like every year, we expect him to be a big part of those game plans. Next up is Luke Johnson. Luke? Uh, Pete, I kind of just want to see you yell at Larry. Um. <laughs> Uh, all right. Pete will never yell at me, man. No way. <laughs> Following up on the uh, on the Alvin Kamara thing, you know, last year, uh, I think he only had like two catches of, of twenty or more yards, and that's kind of been an area where he's like excelled those big chunk plays in the passing game. Um, was was there anything behind that in, in your in your eyes besides the injury, or, or do you think that, that could just be chalked up to that? I I, I don't know if there's any correlation between. Uh, those things. I just think that uh, some of those might just be opportunities that we've, get, that we've given them or, you know, maybe just how the play played out, the defense, maybe the ball went somewhere, somewhere else. So it wasn't that we weren't trying to or uh, anything like that. It was just maybe just opportunities. All right. Coach, that's that, it. All right, Luke, you got one more? Yeah, I got one more. I promise it'll be the last one for me. <laughs> that's uh, all good. Look, Pete, uh, Offensively, the last the last couple of years, uh, you know, as you guys had all the success as a team, you you barely turned the ball over. Um, how much emphasis do you guys place on that? How much of it is is Drew just like deciding I'm not going to throw picks? Um, you know, it, it, how, how do you guys kind of explain that? Well, I think this. I think it's a, a point of emphasis, a major point of emphasis, emphasis from Sean Payton from the start, and. Um, his ability to get in front of the team and communicate that and show them the stats and show them where we've been the years that we haven't, uh, you know, where we've had the, the least turnovers or, or um, when we haven't turned it over as much. So there, there's such a strong emphasis from the head coach that starts there and then communicating that message to the player and, and, uh, and, and, you know, making sure that we realize how important it is. And, and when you see the stats and the, and the uh, you, know, you can just point to games that you can go back to where it hasn't been good for us or, and just the win-loss percentage. So I think we just got to keep making an emphasis on it. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate it. All right, guys. All right, thank you all.